So here I'm standing on the left side of a goat that we've skinned the neck, the shoulder, a little bit of the thorax. You can see here that we have some of the cutaneous trunk eye muscle here. So this is going to twitch the skin to keep the flies off. And I've cut so that we could reflect that out of the way. That exposes now our latissimus dorsi muscle, which is going to act to protract the limb. Up here we have our trapezius muscle. Just as in the dog, it has a cervical and a thoracic portion to that. That's important for lifting the shoulder and holding it close to the trunk. Right about here is where the spine of the scapula is. We can see coming off of that is a muscle just like in the dog, the omo transversarius. I'll show you another view from the other side. Omo transversarius, just as in the dog, if the limb is planted, then it's going to turn the head and neck or flex the head and neck if it's contracted bilaterally. But if the limb is elevated, then it's going to pull the shoulder cranially. Okay. Can't forget while we're over here, our omo transversarius sits over a large lymph node right here, which is the superficial cervical lymph node. Superficial cervical lymph node is palpable in the large animal, except for in the horse where there's multiple small ones. Okay. And so that's going to be draining head and neck and from the shoulder as well. Here we've got a muscle that is going from the arm to the head. <laughs> Must be brachiocephalic muscle. Yeah, brachiocephalic. Remember on the brachiocephalic, once again, we have to determine is the limb planted or elevated for its action. If the limb is planted, it's going to turn the head and neck if it contracts unilaterally. It's going to flex the head and neck if it contracts bilaterally. Okay. If the limb is elevated, it's going to advance the limb. Okay. We also can see here the deep pectoralis muscle. I'll give you another view of that in a bit. Just a little preview before we get to the, all the muscles of the limb. We have here this thin guy here is actually the tensor fascia anabrachii muscle. Here we can see the long head of the triceps and the lateral head of the triceps brachii muscles, extensors of the elbow. Just as in the dog and the ox, we have both a spinous portion as well as an acromial portion to the deltoideus muscle, one of our major flexors of the shoulder. Okay. Now let's move over here into the neck muscles. Okay, so looking at the ventral surface of the neck here, we see the brachiocephalicus is going to be the dorsal border of our jugular groove. Our jugular vein is within this fat right here. The ventral border is going to be the sternocephalicus. Okay, sternocephalicus, just like the ox, has a mandibular portion, or sternomandibularis. But instead of attaching to the mandible, it's going to attach to the zygomatic arch. We also have a mastoid portion here, which is going to then go deep to the jugular groove. And that is the sternomastoid portion. Okay, but all of this basically sternocephalicus. Okay, so our sternocephalicus is going to be the ventral border of our jugular groove. We come down here and right on our ventral border of our trachea, we're going to see some very thin muscles. They start to divide right here into the sternohyoideus, which is going to go to the basohyoid bone, and the sternothyroideus, which comes up here to attaches to the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. Okay. Remember, these guys are important for pulling the base of the tongue and the larynx caudally during swallowing. Okay. We see this other little muscle here that's coming to join the sternohyoideus and it actually comes up here and attaches about the fourth and fifth cervical vertebra. 
this is going to be the omo hyoideus okay remember in the course the omo hyoideus went to the medial aspect of the scapula so omo was good part of the name but here it's not a good part but we still call it omo hyoideus because it's very similar has the same action helping the sternohyoideus pull the base of the tongue caudally okay so we can also see if we reflect these up we can see our carotid sheath containing our common carotid artery our vagosympathetic trunk we can see our esophagus right here and between the esophagus and the trachea we have our recurrent laryngeal nerve okay now we see in this specimen some cervical thymus so in our large animals we do have not only the thoracic but the cervical portion of the thymus and so that tells us this is a younger animal okay but it is regressing because usually it extends all the way up the neck so if we come on up here we can see nicely where that sternothyroidus attaches so our laryngeal cartilages end about here then our trachea at the junction of that is where we find our thyroid gland okay we lift this animal up like this we can see our pectoralis muscles here we have the descending portion and the transverse portion of our superficial pectoralis muscle and then we have our deep pectoralis muscle here so these guys remember adduct the limbs very important for holding the limbs under the body during weight bearing okay now let's flip this guy over this way so we have transected the brachiocephalicus here so now we can see that homo transversarius better coursing up to the wing of the atlas We've also transected the trapezius muscle here, which better exposes deep to that our rhomboideus. We have a thoracic as well as the cervical portion of our rhomboideus. We have the splenius muscle here and more serratus ventralis here. Our splenius muscle we've transected and that's going to expose our longissimus system and our transversospinalis system and I've cut the semispinalis capitis here so now we can see nicely the funicular and the laminar portion of the nuchal ligament and the nuchal ligament is important for holding up the head of our large animals so when they graze they contract the flexors of the neck muscles to graze and then they just have to relax those and recoil from this allows their head to come up okay I gotta show you this little gem right here so we see on the medial surface of the brachiocephalic right about where there would be a, a junction the clavicular intersection we see this little muscle coming off here and then coming down here to the sternum that muscle is the subclavius in the uh, ruminant so it's not as big as the horse but it's pretty pretty fun to find so now we're looking at the goat with the limb amputated we see the latissimus dorsi muscle we see the pectoralis muscles here the superficial and the deep we see the scalenus muscle here all of this here and here is serratus ventralis here is that superficial cervical lymph node which is quite large in the ruminant here's the brachiocephalicus the sternocephalicus with the jugular groove we see our 
Omo transversarius going up to the transverse process of the atlas. We can nicely see now the iliocostalis system, the longissimus system, and then up in here the transversospinalis system. Remember we cut the splenius muscle here and we can now see the semispinalis portion of that which we cut to see the nuchal ligament. Okay. So we don't see on this specimen, although we've seen it on others, a very thin muscle that kind of sits like this, has like three little portions of it, and it would act to contract and pull the ribs forward in inspiration. And that is the serratus dorsalis cranialis muscle. But we do not see it in this specimen here. The sclenus muscle is also a muscle that when it contracts, it's going to pull the ribs cranially for inspiration. The abdominal muscles, on the other hand, down here, they're going to pull the ribs caudally for expiration.